Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Another week of SNS, your weekly dose of Saturday Night Special. So I want to start off and uh, give everybody a reminder. We've got a lot of new people to the channel. We've got people subscribing every day. Uh, for all the newcomers that aren't really sure what SNS is, Saturday Night Special, this is a mixed format video. Okay, so that means that there's going to be there's going to be a little bit of machine work. There's going to be a little bit of viewer mail. There's going to be some tools and whatever else that might be going on throughout that week or the past two weeks that I want to compile into this video because there might be segments of things that doesn't belong in dedicated machining videos, you know, things like that. So this has always been and always will be a mixed format video where I just have a lot of different mixed subjects and sometimes there might be a lot of machine work and sometimes there may be very little machine work. I had said last week that there wasn't going to be a lot of machining and after I had filmed this part of it, I go in and start editing a video and then I realized I had a bunch of footage there from work that I wanted to share that I forgot about. So it ended up being a, a, you know, a good segment there. And so I continue to take those little short clips throughout the day of these little projects and day jobs that I'm on. And I like to share those on this SNS. So uh, I've got another segment of some custom sprockets that I made at work and we're gonna share those in, in this episode. There may be some other stuff mixed in there. I really don't know until I get into the computer and I start throwing everything in there and I see where the timeline is and, and uh, see what kind of room I have to add those things. So just, just keep that in mind. A, a lot of my longtime viewers know this, but I want the newcomers to realize that this is a, this is a mixed format video. If, you're, if you don't like tools and you don't like showing viewer mail and things like that, this is not the video for you. Please move on. I've got other dedicated videos just for machine work and things like that all right so i also want to uh mention the uh the new booth machine t-shirts right here these are available over at the the store frontier website i got a link in the video description down below so uh check that out thanks to everybody that's been going over to pick up a new shirt i think they're pretty cool and i like wearing it myself all right and we had a we had a surprising amount of entries last week i've got that new form for people to click on and fill out for entering in the machinery's handbook giveaway. Whenever I checked that after last weekend, I had nearly 600 entries into that machinery's handbook giveaway. So it seems to be working real well and I think it's gonna work great for the drawing. I, I can pull up a spreadsheet and it's got everybody in there listed from one to whatever. And uh, so that's what we're gonna use to draw the names now is that spreadsheet. So hopefully if you entered the old way you went in there and did it again. I've got that link in the video down below so that anytime anybody can enter into that to that contest. And and just a reminder about that book. I, I wanted to make sure that these books are going to people that need these books. Somebody that doesn't already have a machinery's handbook, somebody that's in the trade, that's new, that's learning, or maybe you've been in it for a while and you just never got one. You know, somebody like that. Uh, I had a couple people email me saying that they just love to collect these books and they entered anyway. So I, 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 don't, I don't want it to be for a book collector. I want it to be for somebody that's in the shop working and needs that handbook, you know? So I was, that was my way of trying to pay those books forward to somebody else that could use it because I've already got a couple of them. I don't need any more. So just keep that in mind whenever you uh, enter in, okay? And lots of answers to the questions I had in there of, What's your favorite content? What kind of content you like to see more? I haven't been able to read it all, believe me. There's, there's almost 650 entries at this point filming this. So I go through there a little bit every day and try to scan through the, the, the answers and, and read that. So anyway, we got, I've got one book out here. I've got several still to give away, but I got one book and we're gonna draw one name for this week. And, and hopefully that's gonna uh, help out with the flow there. You know, just deal with one name and one address because I have to, Whenever I get these books and I have to get them together and then go down to the post office during my lunch hour to mail these things off because by the time I get off work, the post office is already closed. So it's, it's really difficult for me to, to you know, run these errands throughout the day when I've only got like a 30 minute lunch break. So uh, we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna stick to the one for right now and, uh, and see how that goes, okay? So we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so some more content that I have for you is going to be some auction acquisitions. All right, there was a there was a recent auction here in town 
for a uh, retired master machinist that had passed away and they did an estate sale of his you know, his house and everything and he had a machine shop there I really really wish that I could have met this man and I uh, got to know him and, and be friends with him because he he had a nice shop there at his house and a lot of tools he was definitely a tool collector just like a lot of us are but what was really cool about this man his, his name was Mr. Breeze I don't know what his first name was but his name was Mr. Breeze he was born in 1923 in Durham, North, North Carolina, and he was a World War II veteran. He was in the Army Air Corps, and he also served in the Korean War, and he was a retired master machinist from NAS Pensacola. So I know that he worked with my granddad because my granddad had retired from NAS Pensacola as a machinist as well. So I didn't get to meet him, but I did end up with a few of his tools and a few of his books. So. I'm going to share those things with you, and uh, I, I wish I could have got a few more things, but I just, you know how auctions are, man. People get in there and just run those bids up and crazy numbers, but I did get a few things and uh, some good mementos to uh, remember him, and I thought that this is a good way to uh, kind of honor Mr. Breeze and, the, and to uh, help remember him a little bit more through my channel, okay? So I think that's going to be about it. We'll go ahead and get to that stuff now. I think I got a couple of the tools that I'm going to share with you. And then I have some footage there of those custom sprockets that I made at work. And then we'll, we'll just see what else we can throw in there, okay? I got a couple things here. I want to uh, give thanks to uh, my friend uh, Glenn. He is, he's another local YouTuber, uh, Duckman Cycles and BW Garage. Anyway, he, he had stopped by this week and he's got some uh, work right here he asked if I could help him with. So we got some projects to help him with on one of his VW uh, car projects there. And a while back, he's the one that had built this original shop computer to uh, help me out. And he had, he had these two pictures and you, you know this picture right here. This is the one that's at the very end of this video right here, the Saturday Night Special. That's the only picture I have of me, my granddad and my dad. And he had been holding on to these, and this is another one of me and Dad right there at, at our old shop. And I've been asking him for a while, you know, hey, I want my pictures back. Make sure that nothing happens to those things. But he had a little project he was going to do. But anyway, he finally did that, and he stopped by and showed me the jobs. And he ended up making some really nice pictures for me to hang up on the wall. This is sort of like a, an entire framed picture right there, full size picture of uh, me dad and granddad and then he did the same thing for this one right there for uh, me and dad you know this is the mill this mill machine right here is the one that you see me using when i'm at work when i'm at motion anytime i'm showing video of that mill machine it's this one right here the acro mill so anyway good picture of me and dad down there at the shop you can see i'm still wearing my coveralls there i think this was taken the actually the uh yeah it was taken the same day mom was there she took these pictures of us so anyway thank you very much glenn i really appreciate it i'm going to go hang these up in my office okay this was a cool gift that my friend barry robbins sent to me he's uh, he's on instagram under old tape 61 bought a few of the uh the vintage charts from him and the drill indexes but he sent me a little gift adam you're a legend thanks for all the love b barry Robbins and Sons Hardware. That's his logo. That's what's on my hat too. Sent me another sticker. So this is what he had sent right here. This is a brand new, never used Lufkin notepad. Look at this. They got their micrometer advertisements there in the page and just a little notepad for the shop. Never been used. He had, I guess he had uh, run across a, uh, a box of these things and he had shared them there on his Instagram page. So very cool of you barry i really appreciate that that's nice i am not going to use that because that's just i want to keep it just like that and untouched so this is going to go in my display cabinet in the house where i put all my nice little precision trinkets and things like that and uh please check out barry on instagram under old tape 61. all right thanks barry so this is one of my new tool acquisitions this week and a viewer of mine michael landgren he had reached out to me through email and said that he had something that he thought that I might be interested in. So he showed me this and said to make him an offer, and I did, and he accepted my offer, and he sent it to me. 
This is one of the tools that I had shown on my vintage steer poster down on the wall that, that I didn't already have and something that I've always kept my eyes out for the right deal to come along and it finally did. So what we have is a nice Starrett 199 Master Precision level. These levels right here are good for a half a thousandth per foot. All right. And it's in really good shape. I really don't know what the age of it is, but it is. it does have a vintage look to it. And the bottom has been scraped in. It, it has been scraped in, but I can tell that it's been well used. There is some fine scratches in there where things been, uh, you know, somebody's been sliding around on a surface. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. Michael didn't say anything about him using this. He just says that he acquired this and didn't need it and wanted to pass it on my way because he knew that I, would, that I would enjoy it. So what this looks like to me is that this could be a nice scraping project for me. You know, I started getting into the scraping last year, but I didn't really follow through with it and continue practicing, but it has been on my mind wanting to do. Uh, the flat surfaces like this is going to be a lot easier for me to do. So I think I might be able to uh, scrape this thing in. I know that I would like to. I do have a hand scraper and I also have a power scraper now, which I forgot to show you guys a while back, but I did get a Biax. And it's just in good clean shape. So I got a heck of a deal on this thing from Michael. So I just, I want to tell him thank you very much for giving me a really good deal on this because these go for some pretty, pretty good bucks over there on eBay. And uh, luckily for me, you know, I didn't have to pay all that much for this thing, but it's going to be a nice tool to have around here. So thank you very much, Michael. All right, so we're going to get into some of the stuff that I had gotten from Mr. Breeze's auction. And I want to start with this right here. And you can probably tell why I ended up <laughs> winning this auction, this lot number right here. I've seen this online and I've seen these tap wrenches, man, and you know that this is just something that I absolutely love is these old Greenfield tap and die tap wrenches, the coloring on them. I just love the fit and finish of these things. And there was a couple of them in this box that I could see in the picture. So uh, I bid on this and ended up winning. So this is a Greenfield number, number five, and you can see that it's still got some really nice coloring there, the color case hardening in the center. Looks like one that he probably used quite a bit. Uh, again, this is the stuff from Mr. Breeze. All right, so we got that tap wrench right there. We've also got this Greenfield tap and die that's been well used. This is a number zero. It's been highly polished from all the use, you know, being in the hands right there. So it's lost some of its color case hardening there, but a really, really clean tap wrench there. And then we also got this guy, and this is the one that really stood out because of the case hardening. You can see the tiger stripes in there. It just looks absolutely beautiful. And I love these things because they just don't build them like this anymore. I don't think we'll ever see these things again. This one is a, is a Threadwell. Thread, uh, Threadwell Greenfield number 37 USA. And unfortunately, it's got this rust down here on the knurled handle, but I'm going to clean that up. So, and uh, get rid of that. It's got just a little bit down there, but this must have been, I don't know, maybe it was sticking out in the, sticking out of the toolbox for a long time and collecting some rust, but this one doesn't look like he used it all that much. I can tell that it has been used there on the jaw, but it's just absolutely beautiful, man. That's why I like these things. And anytime I have an opportunity to pick them up for a good price, I do. It's just one of those things that I like to collect. Some people like to collect guns and Knives, I like tap wrenches myself. Now here's the here's a really cool one. This has got his name on there. Mr. Breeze there on the side. I thought he had it in two places, but maybe that was a different one. So anyway, I don't know anything about this particular tap wrench. It seems like something that would have been factory made, but I don't know. So if uh, if somebody out there recognizes this particular tap wrench, let me know. And um, I'd like to know where this thing was manufactured. It's built like a normal tap wrench, like the Greenfields there. It just doesn't seem like a shop, shop made tool. But anyway, I don't know, maybe he did. Maybe he did make this. 
but he, if he did, he did a really nice job on that one. All right, so there's those. And then we've also got the T-handle style tap wrenches right here. And we've got a Hanson. That's another Hanson. This one is a no name. Don't know what that one is. And then this is another one of those. This is more of the cheaper variation, but these I'm not, I don't get too excited about these unless they're really, really special. But um, I, re I was really going after these. And, and you see, we've also got some, some dies, die stock handle, and then helicoil taps that were in here as well. This is a, a tool to install a helicoil. But as I said, these were the things that I was going after right here was these tap wrenches. So that's, uh, that's one group of tools. Let me show you the next now. All right, I ended up bidding on this lot of books. And the reason why I wanted this lot of books is because this guy right here, uh, Machine Tool Operation Part 1, and I've got, I, I thought I had Part 2 out here, but I've actually got it inside. I, I read it sometimes. I keep it by my bed. Part two is the one that another viewer had given me, and I've been using that chapter in it for a lot of the shaper operations. The, uh, the, the video that I just shared on cutting the cast iron, I got the tips out of this book right here. So this is machine tool operation part one. Look at that. U.S. Naval Air Station Library, Jacksonville, Florida. Pretty cool. So I haven't even thumbed through these books since I got them, but I do plan to. So this one's going to have... Uh, looks like a bunch of lathe, lathe work information in here. And these are just fun, always fun books to go through. Look, you got line shafting information in there. Just always seeing this information from the, uh, the old ways of machining. Look at that planer right there. An angular cut on a string of punch press bodies courtesy of Cincinnati Planer Company. And then here's a shaper. This looks about the size that I have. It looks like a Cincinnati. Uh, nope, American, courtesy of the American Tool Works. And that is a 24 inch shaper right there. Pretty cool. That's one of the reasons why we love these books, man. There's the classic old school machine shop right there. You got the bridge crane running over the entire place. So anyway, I wanted that. I got it, and then this is the same one. Look, machine tool operation part one. So this looks like a newer version of this guy right here. All right, it's uh, made by the same same people. It's got the same names on there. Printed at McGraw Hill. All right. So anyway, there's those two, and I don't remember what else is here because I haven't looked through them. So you got guns. Bernard W. Breeze. So that must have been Mr. Breeze's name was Bernard. Okay, he's got his address there, Pensacola, Florida. They ended up auctioning off the house too, by the way. So, man, look, it's got a bunch of his stuff right there. I don't want to go through that yet uh, since I hadn't done it. I'd like to go through this and see what he's got there. If we can find something interesting, I'll come back next week and we'll see, uh, we'll see what he's got right there. But Okay, so this is just a notepad. That's what this is, notepad book. Huh, all right. What is this book right here? Practical Trade Mathematics. Cool. Copyright 1920 and 1923. Wow, so this is an oldie right here. Mathematics book. All right, cool. I look forward to going through that one too. The Blue Jackets Manual, 1940. Uh, I don't know what the Blue Jackets is, so evidently it has something to do with the military. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of military busts that'll know. Blue Jackets manual, United States Navy, 1940, 10th edition. So this has something to do with, uh, you know, your Navy guys out there. That's pretty cool. Neat book. All right, so then we got one more right here, and this was interesting. Uh, Monsanto, that was a company that... Well, they're still here, but they've changed names so many times. They're not Monsanto anymore. It's, I don't even remember what they're called now. <clears throat> so this must have been one of, their, one of their books that they use for the maintenance and stuff like that. Yeah, Mechanics Handbook from 1973 for Monsanto. <clears throat> That's one of our big industrial plants right here, you know, textile plant where they make fibers. And uh, we've done quite a bit of stuff for them at, uh, at Motion where I work. 
and they're just I'm trying to think of what they call it, and I can't think of it off offhand, but it used to be Monsanto. So it makes me wonder, did he actually work there for some amount of time, maybe after he retired from NES? So anyway, there's the, there's the books that I got for Mr. Breeze's uh, estate sale. So here's the last item that I won from the uh, Mr. Breeze estate sale. And what we have is a very nice cast iron surface plate with a wooden top lined with felt. And this is a 12 inch by 12 inch, actually I think it's 12 and a half by 12 and a half cast iron surface place. And, and you can see, you've got a nice hand scraped finish on there that looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to being able to check this and see just how flat it still is. Turn it over and show you, it does have a tag to show the makers here. So, manufactured by Machine Products Corporation, and where were they at? Detroit, Michigan. Let's see if I can read that date. Wow. I can't make out what that says. I'll have to do some cleaning on it and see if I can figure, it, figure that out. Department 43. You can see the bottom of it. It's got nice webbing to it. Six footprint pattern right there. Got the tapped hole so that you can make you some handles there. So I ended up getting it for a really good price. Uh, I don't recall offhand what it was, but it it wasn't that much. I mean, it was. I think this was around fifty dollars, but I just don't remember. It wasn't a whole lot of money. So just another tool that I'm I'm happy that I got a few of these things from Mr. Breeze, and this is going to be a nice service plate to have around here. I've got two of them now. Actually, I got three. I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, the big cast iron surface plate is actually at my uh, friend. He's it's at my friend's Lance. It's at his place, and he is rescraping the top for me. Is is uh, something that he wanted to help me out and do. So I've got the other one that I got from Jack, and now I've got this one from uh, Mr. Breeze. So adding to the <laughs> cast iron surface plate collection. I just really like these things right here, and it's a having a cast iron surface plate. This is something that if you know how to scrape and you have a reference surface, you can always make flat again, where the uh, granite surface plates, you have to, you're gonna have to have somebody come in with a proper lap and be able to lap that thing back in. So anyway, that, that's all of the, uh, the auction scores from Mr. Breeze. And just really happy that I got to share these things with you. And, and uh, I've got a couple pieces from his estate. So this is the machinery's handbook that we're going to be giving away this week and this was given to us by Robert Curl and he was from Owasso, Michigan and I wanted to share this box. Tom's going to be very happy that, that it says Oxtool approved shipping box. This is a great little example of, of a, an easy way to package one of these priority mail boxes whenever you're shipping some heavy items, especially like heavy tooling like end mills and shell mills and milling tools, just anything that's heavy. You take in some of this little inexpensive wood and cut it and line the box there and it keeps the uh, heavy items from busting through this cardboard because uh, the shipping guys just take these things and they just hurl them through the air and, and uh, before you know it, it's just busted open there. So anyway, here we go. Here is the the book, oh, there was, um, there was another item in here that I was going to share with you, something that he gave me, so we'll get to that. So the 18th edition from Robert Curl, and it's got the, uh, the page protector there on the outside. 18th edition, I think we got a letter right there. Let's see, let's see what it says. Hey, Adam, I had some extra room in the flat rate shipping box, so I thought you needed another machinery's handbook. I already have one plus a black book. So you can either keep one or find it a new home, Bob. So uh, Bob, I've been calling you Robert. So Bob Curl or Robert Curl. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna give away your machinery's handbook right here. And let's go ahead and show this, this little guy. So this is pretty neat. He sent me one of these uh, metal drill indexes, the uh, Cleveland, I've shown these before, this, this guy right here, okay? Well, it's actually this one. I had 
I had picked this up from uh, Barry Robbins and it come with the original metal case just like this guy right here. So these go in these metal cases, but evidently he had this one and wanted to send it to me. And this one, oh, he's got some center drills in there too. Look at that. <laughs> these are always nice to have. So thank you, Bob, for the center drills. And got the uh, metal case there for the Cleveland Twist Drill Company metal index case, just like that. Very cool. Nice little trinket there for the collection. I'll put this in there with the other one in my display case. And I'm glad that this is, this is saved and not going to be ended up in the scrap pile. So thank you very much for that, Bob. Very nice. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get to our uh, machinery handbook giveaway. So this, this is the new form that all of you guys have seen that have uh, entered in to win. You know, this right here. And if you look up here where, where it says responses, we got 647 responses out of this handbook giveaway. Totally amazing. So we can click over here to responses, and then this is a list right here that's got everybody's, everybody that's entered in, 647 of you. Really cool. And then this little green icon right here that looks like it's got a plus sign on it is if I click on that, that's what opens up the spreadsheet that's got all of the information on there. All right, so let's just go back to uh, summary right there. All right, I've got the spreadsheet open and I'm going to point out a couple of things so here's here it is from the very first person that uh, entered all the way down to the newest and lines one two three and four are right, two three and four are blank and that's because I those were test emails that I tried out to make sure this thing was going to work so I deleted those out of there so that those aren't in the entry so we're going to start with number five all right and then we're going to go down to our last one which is going to be 651. So these just came in today. These these guys right here. All right. And I also want to point out that uh, block C right here, line C, whatever, that's going to have your name and your address on it. Now, if I was to redo this, now I know I should have had one question that had just your name, and then the second question would have been your address. But I didn't realize that it. I I wasn't thinking that far ahead when I did this. You know, first time using it. So. Well, maybe next time I'll I'll know better, but I really have enjoyed uh, being able to go through some of these questions and answers and and reading what's on some of your minds on the content that you enjoy, your favorite content, what what you'd like to see more of. So I have not been able to read all of these, believe me. I but I've tried to go through some of them, but I'm going to continue to go through and read some of these in the evening times when I'm through with my editing. But this is really good food for thought for me on uh, the type of content that my viewers are enjoying and the kind of stuff that they would like to see more of. So I appreciate you guys filling out those answers for me, okay? I really I really do. So let's go ahead and get on it. We're going to, let's double check. We're going to start with five and then we're going to go to 651. All right, five through 651. Five. And then maximum 651. All right, so here we go. Let's hit generate and pick a name. 621. All right, so we're going to go to the bottom of our list. So uh, I believe I mentioned that I've got these, I've got block C hidden so that I'm not going to reveal everybody's address, you know, so don't worry about that. But I'm going to have to open it up so I can see. Uh, let's see where we're at. 621. I'm sorry. Six twenty-one. Okay, there we go. It's gonna be Chris Williamson. All right, Chris, congratulations. You are gonna be the winner of this 18th edition Machinery's Handbook giveaway. All righty, Chris. Well, congratulations on the win there on the Machinery's Handbook. So we'll be getting this coming to you real soon. And also throw in the little the little sticker pack, the A Bomb 79 sticker pack, along with that one right there. And I'll even ship it back in the Ox Tool approved shipping box there for you. All right. A little bit about Chris Williamson, <clears throat> his reply on the uh, Machinery's Handbook giveaway there. 
He's from Lexington, North Carolina. And his favorite content is using machining to repair anything. And content he'd like to see more of is general mechanical repair using machining techniques. So thank you very much for that information, Chris. And uh, I'll have this book coming to you in the coming week, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, jump to our machining that we have for this week. And I hope you guys enjoy this week's video. I think I got the fixture plate for uh, welding just about done. We've got a few 5 8 pins here. And then we have a 3 8 pin pressed in right there, and that's the line of the keyway. And I also drilled and tapped it to where I could use a set screw in case I was having problems with a solid pressed in pin that we could use a set screw, but you get a little bit of wiggle with the set screw. I'm trying to keep everything as tight as I can. So. Trying to do it one-handed here, which is tricky. All right, rockets in there. Got a good fit right there. And what we need with this hub, it has to be on the other side of this. It has to be even with this face right here. Now, I know that's not how it's typically designed. You're supposed to bore it and saw it this way, but this particular one has to be face mounted on this side right here and they want it timed. They want this key timed directly in the center of a tooth. For every one, they all have to be in line, okay? So, again, one-handed operation here. There it is, okay, just push it in there. Lined up with that pin right there. Everything is in line. All right, and now when we do our tacking, I have to put a couple of bolts here just to just to secure it, keep it from trying to pick up. We'll put one there, and we'll put one there. All right, and 
then what else I think I'm going to do, do I've got a threaded hole in the center so I can put one across the top there too. And what I think I need to do is drill and tap it again for some jacking bolts in case this gets tight inside the fixture. So that's what I'm going to do next. We got the we got the sprocket in there, so just want to show you the fit up there. And of course, I get it crooked. Okay. And then we got our hub. I got it all cleaned up. We got the that cleaned up. Keyway and the pin. Lined up. Now I'll put my bolts in there to hold everything down, and then whenever I get it tacked off, I'll use the two jack and bolts there to push it out of the jig. Alrighty, there's the four sprockets uh, finished you to, up. You had to beat them in with the four wheels. They're done, and looks like all the keys are in line with the teeth, just like they're supposed to be. Turn rubber shafts and stuff. Put the rubber shaft up there. Alright. Another one done. We can get them out of here. Fit in. 